Tom Mills here, and I'm on location with John Godden. John Godden is our energy consultant for the Green Home TV Home Edition project. And we're just working through some of the energy pre-planning issues in this project. Tell us a bit about yourself, John. I've been an R2000 builder for 22 years, Tom, and I've uh, actually done a whole bunch of things around that. In building a house, I design it, I would design and install the mechanical systems, mm -hmm. and I'd actually be framing it. So I know a lot about what it takes to sort of uh, to build the house as well as design it. Mm -hmm. So the role you're serving now as a consultant to builders and to, to individuals, you come at that role having already built a number of houses yourself. Yeah, so, you know, nuts and bolts approach to it. Um, but I also know a lot about the emerging technologies and I can help people sort of find their way through the maze of all the decisions that they have. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no doubt that it is a maze. I mean, there's lots of choices when you start uh, wanting to look at building an energy efficient house. And there's a number of different opinions about what products should be used. Exactly. And um, so we've talked a bit about some of those different options. And, uh, but that's a role that, that you're doing for individuals and you're also doing that for builders, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Because uh, believe it or not, homeowners are coming to this uh, scenario fresh. Builders actually have been doing the same sort of things over and over again. And uh, ironically, they may not be open to as many of the, the new technologies that they could use. Um, having said that, homeowners actually are facing the pitfalls of maybe trying new things. And it's very important to find somebody that is knowledgeable and you can trust about the decisions you're gonna make. Because I think you would say yourself, having started this process, the number of decisions are overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and not every new thing it really seems to be the best thing to do in, in a given situation. Yeah, and there's, there's lots of gimmicks. So it's not any different from any other sort of marketing that there's, there's products that have gimmicks and that's how they try and sell themselves. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we're actually wanting to find is those products and appliances and processes that actually deliver performance. Mm -hmm. So when someone's starting out in this journey, and they want to start either doing an addition or maybe building from scratch. What are some of the things that they should be looking at first as they start working through those decisions? Well, the thing that I think is of utmost importance, uh, we're all thinking about energy, but it's this concept of first fuel, that conservation, reducing the demand that you're actually gonna be placing on an energy source is well thought out before you start. So. If you, for example, use better windows and a more airtight building envelope and higher levels of insulation, you're not actually gonna need a heating plant that, that's bigger. It's, it's gonna be smaller and have less capacity and less demand. So um, I know as we've been thinking through our building envelope, uh, for us it has been, we've kind of coined the term insulate well. Right, exactly. And so this idea of first fuel then is really about conservation. Right, so we've done some preliminary um, analysis of your building envelope, and uh, basically we've just run it through a computer, and we've done some what ifs to see um, what some of the different building systems you have, and basically your addition came out at about, I think, 18,000 BTUs, which is probably about a quarter, 25% of what it would have been otherwise. Mm -hmm. For the person that's starting this process, they want to ask themselves, what can they do on the conservation side of things? But I know you're also a very uh, strong promoter in terms of education and, and the person's responsibility, the homeowner's responsibility to educate themselves well. Exactly. So uh, we're all used to getting free estimates. And I, I just want to point out to people that um, a free estimate really didn't cost anybody anything to get. So it, it it takes time and uh, I spend a lot of time with my uh, customers and my consulting business actually going through all the choices that they have. And uh, again, on the internet, you can go on and get all the information you want, but the key thing is actually understanding what that information means. Again, there's, there's many choices, but there's how all those things integrate together to actually create the whole thing, so. 
Uh, it, it, is, it is a complicated process. It's, uh, a house is a very complicated thing to conceive. And uh, if you're doing renovations, you're basically taking something old and trying to make it new, so it's even more of a challenge. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing that I think is important is conservation, but actually understanding the energy source that you're gonna use to, to power your house. So what are you plugging your house into? Where did that energy come from? Is that energy source actually efficient all the way through its delivery system? And I think that's one of the things that we talked about, that um, we were able to give you a scenario to show you the different costs of energy sources and equipment that are relative to the building envelope that you decided to choose. Right. Right. Uh, I'd actually encourage people to talk to their friends to see if people have had experiences with different things. And I think you'd be surprised uh, a lot of people have changed their furnace system. They've done a lot of work around their house, so you can get some sort of experiential information from that. Um, and, you know, just generally getting out there and, and talking to people, um, talking to contractors, trying to gauge uh, whether or not they, they do know uh, about the new technologies. When we first we first met and uh, I was talking to you a bit about this project, we went through a bit of a process in terms of analyzing um, what we had to work with and where we wanted to go and the goals that we wanted to achieve. At the time, we had a number of different decisions to make about different systems in the house, including the, the insulation, the envelope, the heat plant, etc. And the, heat, the envelope that we had, uh, had, had set at that point 2x6 construction with bad insulation had a heat loss of about 55,000 BTUs. We started looking at some different options because uh, we wanted to bring that heat loss down. We chose to go with ICF and uh, you certainly had some input at the time about that. Well ICF actually stands for insulated concrete forms and it, it is a great system for a homeowner that actually wants somebody else to come in and finish the shell because that's the hardest part of the job, is doing the excavation, getting the foundation in the ground, and actually building the shell so you can weatherproof it. So it's a great system that lends itself for an owner builder to actually get that structure up quickly. Mm -hmm. And um, then you as a homeowner could uh, think about doing your own contracting to finish it off. So um, it is uh, thermally efficient, uh, again, with all these different products, we need to check on the claims. Uh, some of the manufacturers are saying that, uh, you know, you can get our 30 walls. Uh, you're going to end up with that because you've actually, you're adding insulation on the outside. Um, but I think the speed and ease of that system for you in this case is ideal. Well, and, and certainly I know from our point of view, Part of it as well was the air tightness that the, the right. ICF is going gonna, is gonna to give in that equation. That's a great point because um, sort of a conventional uh, wall cavity structure with the 2 by 6 studs you were talking about is more of a challenge to get the house air tight. And air tightness is that invisible heat loss that accounts for about 30% of the heat loss in a house. So mm -hmm. it's very important. Mm -hmm.